What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, B-Hop Video Shout. And as always, I got my podcast partner off in this thing. OG Gangsta Wicked and Ghetto Mafia. What's good with it, boss? See that? See that? We done got started. Wick ain't Where even with going? us. He, he, he left us. No, he, he left us. He got his he makeup care. on. I know him. I'm on another planet. He, oh, care. what planet is that called? It's called Planet, planet Wick. Planet Wick. Planet Wick. What goes on I'm on Planet Wick? I'm thinking about leaving y'all here, weekend. man. I'm thinking about with everything going on out here, B-High. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 giving me another planet. Uh-huh. I'm leaving. I'm building me a spaceship, a wick shift. <laughs> and I'm Some trying to leave y'all here, taking me, you know what I'm saying, 10 of them, you know, bad honeys with me. Mm. One or two of my player partners. Uh-huh. I'm leaving y'all down here, man. What made you come to that conclusion that you realized that you needed to get the hell out of here? I'm just you? trying to get away from you. I mean, uh, I, don't, I, don't know if that's, I don't know if that's just too straight said forward. Like I was they said, no, come on, come on. Yeah, I mean, they, come on, man. He loses all the debates right now. No, you know what I'm buddy. Look, matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? Before I say something to either one of y'all, let me introduce who I got with us today yeah. behind. I got Jerry. Is it Jerry May or Jerry D. May? Now you know. <laughs> it's Jerry D. D. May. May. Even though you, you just told that. me that. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. You just told me that one second ago. Yeah, and you supposed to have a, a degree in English for college. Ooh, I have a degree in, you remember uh, in Friday when he said, this is the only thing we need right here? Oh, Five two. Hey, you, hey, those don't work on paper. They don't work on paper. Five two. And we got an Atlanta street legend, man, an uh, uh, industry legend. Uh, Rodney Reed, but for people that know him closely, Double R. What's happening, Double R? Welcome to the show, bro. Hey, how y'all doing, man? Glad to be Appreciate here. Appreciate y'all coming through this thing, Thank fellas. Thank you for having us. Oh, because really? I want to jump right into some things right now. Now, on this interview right here, man, let me. No, it's all about know, me. So, Double R, like <laughs> what do you think about. Oh, just kidding. Now, you can leave right there. I like that. I like that. Take, take, take yeah. the control on, of the right. Come yeah. on, man. Let it ride. See, y'all, see, 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 I can't let it Y'all can't be in the action. Yeah. Uh, hey, Scorpio. I might wind up putting you and Double R out so I can talk to you. Okay, okay. So, now, now, Jerry, you you're a um, uh, a film producer. Yes. Uh, we're gonna get into the DMX movie that you were shooting before mm-hmm. he passed away. The legend. Okay. Um, but I want to talk to you about you know something that Pimp C, uh, late great Pimp C, uh, a story. I want to give you a story since you are from New York, right? Right. And you're one of my New York partners. Partners. That's right. Every every Atlanta true Atlanta nigga got a, a New York partner. We had one from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so um, I think we were doing a show. I want to say in like 1990. This this talk my New York partners, right? And uh, you know, Pimp C. After the show, uh, we at the hotel, and Pimp C came through the door. He come through the door. Bumby went on to the room. You know, Bumby's always you know family man. He chilling. Pimp said, "Wicked, I'm gonna be up there to your room in a minute, man. We are gonna kick it." I said, "Hell yeah!" He said, "You want something to eat?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "I'm gonna bring you some steak and everything." I said, "Bring say this Pimp C." No, no. Like, Get the door done, 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 done. Had four or five more little partners in there. Pimp C went around the room. I'm Pimp C. Everybody like, man, nigga, we know you're Pimp C. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he gets to my little New York partner, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to everybody to introduce themselves. And uh, my New York partner just says, uh, what's up, son? No, what's up, son? Yeah, so up, Pimp's son? So Pimp's like, yeah, what's up? Uh-huh. So Pimp sits down, you know, Pimp talking to me. You know, got steak and eggs. And, you know, he rolling the good green up. And, you know, he got his 45 sitting right there. Now, he started telling me, you know, this was before he did the song with Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He goes, yeah, yeah Wick, man, you know, um, you know, like the, the industry was coming out of New York back then. So when he's speaking, he's not speaking on street New York, right. he's speaking on the industry. Man, they holding me down, man, in New York. You know what I'm saying? I can't really just get ahead, you know what I'm saying? Because they're not feeling a nigga from the South. I don't know if my lingo, you know, if I'm too swagged up for them. What it is, man, I'm tired of New York, man. I'm tired of him. So now while he's saying this, mm-hmm. I'm pointing, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, stop him and say, you know, my partner behind you, he from New York. But my partner behind him, he's here <laughs> doing like this. <laughs> he don't want to know you from New York. No. <laughs> <laughs> he don't from New York. So, 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 Pimps and Pimps going on, you know what I'm saying? He rolling. Yeah, man, you know, sometimes I just want to just, just, just cat in the cabin, man. He's in the head, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, my boy, man, <laughs> <laughs> Make a long story short, man. I'm gonna tie this into the late great Tyler Craig. Pimp C had eyes behind his goddamn head. Mm. 
He turned around and said, man, I'm just messing with y'all. You know what I'm saying? He knew that from when he walked in the room, right. when my boy said, sup, son, yeah. that, that he was, was from New York. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So right. that was just a story from the late, great Pimp C, man. You know what I'm saying? He loved New York, man. You know, and and uh, But he was a very, very intelligent guy. The, the thing that somebody, someone was... Uh, someone like him is already thinking five steps ahead of me to to make friends with my partner from New York. Right. When we, that's the last thing we was on, because we on this pimp C. We finna smoke good. We finna right. drink good. You know what I'm saying? But he really showing love to one of my little New York partners without him even knowing it. Uh, but I want to get up to the DMX. I want to pivot to that. It's called pivoting. Mm -hmm. You know about pivoting? Yeah. Could I comment real quick? You can. I, I could tell that you were real passionate about uh you know that story because your eyes started you know watering up a little bit <laughs> and everything so i know pimp c rest in peace you know yeah. what i mean i could tell that was your partner yeah well you know, now yeah. no 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 don't let me be nicer like that. now yeah. that was a, that was an isolated incident okay i was okay. never invited to the, the thanksgiving dinner now right <laughs> you understand what i'm saying uh when the few times that i did run into him in the streets i always left a, a, an impression on you yeah that's kind of the moral to this whole story like tyler craig would say that when you when you run across great People. You don't have to see them all the time. Right. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? True. But when you do, they leave a lasting impression. Or kind of like I left on Beehive. Uh, you know, when Beehive nice. first, maybe he knew how great I really was. I knew too. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I knew how wack you were. You know, that's what made me so <laughs> angry too. Wack. Wiggity, 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 wack. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that. Wiggity, so, wiggity, 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 that can't be right. Uh, wiggity, wiggity. Uh, Jerry, man, that's where we come from. Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. Yeah, that's where it come from. Wiggity, 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 wack. Double law, you, 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 I, I, you know, I, 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 I got to talk to you next now. I don't think you want to engage. <laughs> don't don't go down that rabbit hole with me how yet. Chris, don't don't say that in his <laughs> But uh, Jerry, man, man, back to you before we get to talking to Double Law, man. I want to talk to you about the DMX. Okay. Uh, you know, movie, you were, you were shooting that before he had passed away. Right. Now, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, about that movie? What was it about? What was the name of it? And how was it working with DMX on a professional level like right. that? Uh, well, shout out to Antonio Simmons, which was, uh, he was the director and also the EP of the movie. And uh, that's how it was brought to my attention. And, and I remember. actually, um, I met DMX before because we started filming that movie about maybe like a year ago before he actually passed. The name of the so. movie was? The name of the movie was Dogman. Dogman. Yeah, Dogman and everything like that. And uh, this was um, uh, around, the, around the time where, you know, people would say X is probably uncontrollable and stuff mm. like that. But mm. X had a type of energy yeah. mm -hmm. that when you when he walks in the room, you could just feel his energy. And when he opened his mouth up, mm. you'd be sitting there like a kid and just listening to what he's saying. Especially when that man get to preaching. Mm. Yeah, he loved the Lord. Boy. He loved the Lord. Boy. That, that man, you know what I mean, besides him rapping and stuff like that, you know, um, uh, when I first met him, you know, um, he kind of shot me as, uh, okay, you got to kind of know him. You just don't run up to him. Hey, DMX, I love you. Why, 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 why? Because right. you, don't, you don't know. Yeah. Right. He might turn you down. He might flip the script because he yeah. tell you, you know, he, 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 could, he could flip real quick. Right. And so when I first met him, I was like, you know, I kind of just played the background, just chilled. And, you know, he told me, when he first seen me, he said, okay, I see what he wrote. Okay. You always keep you a little swollen little nigga with you. <laughs> I had a tight shirt on. I thought I was lifting a couple pounds that time. Okay, well, yeah. Was in the gym. yeah, so that's what kind of broke the icing for me. When he yeah. said that to me, I was like, okay, kind of cool. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. so we started kicking it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And then when Antonio brought him to the house so we could film the, uh, you know, um, yeah. one of the scenes uh, from The Dogman, which mm -hmm. is like an action-packed movie. Yeah. You know, you take belly and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you get X just jumping through windows, and it's real exciting. The temple is up here. Mm. You know, of course, um, his last couple of days of shooting with us, when he was at the house, man, we uh, we started filming. We played pool together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I gave him my, my last bottle of Henny. And from there on, he said, I'm at home. I said, yeah, man, you at home. <laughs> he said, he at home, What's man. And uh, yeah. it was just a great dude, man. At the time for the, you know, small time I spent with him, I was like, wow, man. I mean, who wakes up and, and uh, they in the presence of DMX? You know what I mean? Wow. Which is, DMX wasn't just that person. He was like 
a, a drive of energy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that energy was like he can he he can always like um you could look at X and he gonna tell you something that's gonna motivate you to do something great. You know what I'm saying? Like when he sat there and um we was uh um at my house and we were at we was on the patio mm -hmm. outside the patio and we sat there man and um <clears throat> he just started kicking it he started kicking it real hard man about you know about god and about where he came from yeah. and where he went through and how he got there you know how he used to be a stick up kid and from coming mm -hmm. from there to where he at right now and where god took him you know from from doing drugs and stuff like that to where he at now whole bunch of positive stuff man and you know everybody started gathering around with him by then. We 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 stopped shooting. Yeah. Mm. You know we stopped shooting. We listened to this man that he sat there and he started preaching the truth mm. about what's going on in these streets. Like he'd been here before, before all of us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, I, I was blown away. Like, man, if this dude had three hundred thousand people in a room and his voice was the only one to be heard, mm. nobody would leave the place. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just that powerful. So. I was like, uh, of course, when we film and, and, you know, he had passed, you know, when he went back to New York. How did you feel about that, Jerry? I, and I'm glad you brought that up right there. When you heard the news that, that yeah. he passed, what, one, where were you? And two, you know, you know, what was your mind state at that, that, that particular point? So uh, I was at home, right, and Antonio Simmons, who's the, the, the director and the writer and also the EP, and as well as DMA's cousin, that's his first cousin. Mm. So he been with him since day one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you look at the pictures, he was his right there dude, you know, mm. his bodyguard or whatever like that, too, at the same time, make sure body dove him over. So I heard, and then Antonio called me, and I called him. Um, actually, I called him and I was like, "Big dog, is it true?" And he was just like, uh, "You know, you." It was just empty. Mm. Everything was just empty, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because Sorry. we was on the we was on the rise to go up to this next best greatest thing of this chapter mm. of his life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And to be a part of that, that's that that's like legend. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. like being a part of some a, a legendary figure. I mean, you know, that's like great, man. That's like being part of a, you know, uh, you got Martin Luther King calling you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a movement, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah, I was like, I, I was like, um, uh, I was, I was blown away by it, man. I was like, what? It can't be true. Then everybody calling me and stuff. I'm like, I don't know how to respond to that. I mean, you know, um, I but you. I yeah, every, everybody was calling me. And the more the story well, was, you know, yeah, he was just at the house, man. We playing pool and having a good old time. Did you, did you, in, you know a lot of We even went to breakfast. This, this, <laughs> and, I'm on, and I don't want to piggyback out there. You know a lot of time when someone passes, it always, you know, <clears throat> somebody would be like, oh, well, I saw something. Or, you know, he seemed troubled at the time, even though they were king like that. Did you see anything that would just, say, I, that suggests that, you know, I might not see him when he walk out this door again. You know, like. I know it had to hit you like a ton of bricks that it was just from, it was blast. I, I, I have seen, I have had people that have passed on me, but I said, you know what? I, I, I could see, mm. you know, they yeah. kind of was right. going down this road or, you know, even my son, he just got shot eight times. If somebody had called me and said he had don't pass, it wouldn't be far fetched from me. Right. I would still be sad about it, right. but I kind of, my foresight, I kind of saw what was going on. You know, what's that? Did it blindside you just? That was um, the last time you he walked out your house that you would see this man again. Man, let me tell you, we was at my house filming, right, um, to about uh, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. You know, that's from, we just was leaving my house. We got there about 7 p.m. or whatever, maybe earlier, actually. It was like 2 p.m. we got to my house. You know, we was all day just, just filming and stuff. X was there the whole time, you know, and um, something was going on. You know, because even afterwards, even after we got filming, uh, some discussions, you know, mm -hmm. went down and, you know, a whole bunch of extra stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that I kind of just, uh, I didn't want to be a part of. So I kind of just walked away mm -hmm. from the situation, mm -hmm. you know, um, but uh, it's a slight rumor out there, you know, that um, I don't know if y'all heard it or nothing like that. Y'all heard the rumor? No, tell me what. Oh, man, I'm like, I, I shouldn't say nothing then. This, yeah, no, this, say this, it. This, you crawling on, on rocket water. As long as it ain't going to get me killed and all that. Yeah, that I don't story. know, because when, my, when uh, Martin Luther King started talking. <laughs> <laughs> they would have known that you told them. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. No, but on on some real stuff, X was on. You know, um, he was he stopped doing drugs and stuff like that. You know, oh, okay. and then when he went back to New York, man, it was said that uh, he got hooked some type of way and. You know what I mean? That's what happened. You know, then yeah. you know, OD or something like We've that. We've all so. been fighting demons, man. It yeah, ain't man. To be ashamed of. You, you got it. Everybody got some yeah. type of crutch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, I don't care. Liquor, cigarette, weed, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Females. Yeah. yeah. Money. Right. Gambling. Yeah. There's all kind of different things. Be high getting here, man. Uh, uh, for Jerry, before I, we gonna talk about the movie that you have coming out also. Okay. That I'm me and 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 in That's the That's what I was about to go into. No, so it's a guess. No, see, Special Jared, let me go ahead and tell the truth right now because I'm about to piss off <laughs> Andre and everybody else. Yeah. We Did said he wanted to play Ghetto Mafia in the movie. He wanted to play the part that he played, and he wanted to play Andre Rising. That's too. right. <laughs> that, can you, do, and Dion. Do I have and, to comment on that? Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. hell, wait. I know. didn't send you the, the pictures where he dressed up like Dion. Okay, on now. He did. Over the no, I yeah, did. Like, he he was did that. He was going to be fine. No, you were smoking time. crack again. <laughs> okay, we ain't do that. Uh, Jerry, can you speak on that Andre movie, man? Because I know we gearing up yes. for the show over the, off the bins. Uh-huh. What's going on, man? Uh, we, we gearing up for the show on August the 12th. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a, a sensation of a legendary uh, or something. If you ain't somebody... You ain't gonna be there. That's right. You uh, know, Atlanta premiere. That's right, Atlanta premiere. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the show is great, man. I mean, the the movie is great, man. The um, like uh, it starts. We it's, it's a biopic. That's so right. we so take it from Andre Rising, the football player, right? The football player, Andre Rising. Right? 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 You know, he played for seven different NFL yeah. teams. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the few players Ooh. in the league that ever done so. Yeah. You right. know, and 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 you know, um, in this movie, we touch on a lot of. The credibility that he has that some people, you know, didn't know or goes unrecognized. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, him being the the one of the the first highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Black at that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All the accomplishments, all the um all the championships that he have won, mm-hmm. you know, of uh, being um, uh, when he was in uh, college too as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the Big Ten, all, mm-hmm. all type of milestones that this man has actually broken to get there, you know. Mm-hmm. And for him to be nominated into the Hall of Fame, which I think personally he should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time That's ago. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, back, back way back when. That's you right. You know, because, I mean, top ten. Definitely top five, right up in there. Come you know, on. you got to Jerry Rice. You can't name. You can't say Atlanta Falcon, and I ain't even from Atlanta. Right. Yeah. Right. But I'm adopted here now. Come you on. Know? So you you can't right. even say. Is that right, Rodney? Yes, sir. He's my dog. He, he, I, I'm official. I'm gonna get into him. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. That's my guy right yeah. there. Yeah. You can't even say Blackhawks. You can't even say Atlanta Falcons without mentioning Andre Rising. That's right. right. I mean, Prime for real. Time and Showtime. Prime That's time what and they started it. DR That's it. And, Dr- and yep. uh, Andre. Uh, but too, Jerry, um, are you going to touch on you know any the, the, you know the situation with him and Lisa Left Eye Lopez? And before you answer that, right there, I want to say this: uh, Bobby Brown has a new docudrama out, a documentary or something out. And when athletes or or you know famous singers, rappers, whatever, when they marry. Uh, a, a famous woman. Most of the time, the guys demonized. Mm. And whatever the the failure was in that relationship, mm, a lot of times it's, it's put on the guy. Yeah, you know, if it's Bobby Whitney, it's Bobby's fault. It's, Bobby if it's, it's Dre and and, and Lisa. It's, it's Dre's fault. Right. If it's if it's, right now with Cardi B and 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 um, Offset and yeah, Offset, Offset, it'll be Offset. Yeah. yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Most definitely. So I mean, it's this. It's Tory this, Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Absolutely. It's yeah. this. It's Who? this movie. Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. He shot in the foot, did he? I don't know. But my my what point I'm making to you is this: <laughs> Is this pick gonna? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Share some light on something about Andre Rising that we didn't know that because you know it, out here the feeling is that you know Lisa Lisa kind of you know he he was secondary 
he uh, that's the, that's the feeling in the street that you know that she burned his house down because he was a cheater, right? And that you know, but you know, I mean, knowing Dre, Dre is a great guy. Are we right. gonna be able to put him on that pedestal? We'll be able to great put him on is. that pedestal. And uh, this Andre Rising film, straight. Um, first, let me get a shout out to uh, Big D, Derek Handspike. Absolutely. Uh, now, um, who's actually you know the writer and one of the EPs of the film. Now, this movie right here, Andre Rising, like most people don't know, that man was a family man mm. right. all the time. Right. Yeah. He always had his kids with him. I mean, he always was that guy that, you know, what we see in the limelight, what mm. we see on TV and television, that's for TV and television. Right. But when we close the doors and we see, we don't see that part of, you know, his livelihood unless, you know, he decide to bring us into that part. Yeah. You know, that man, I was just with him. He, man, the kids love him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His daughters, his sons, all of them, man. So, you know, I'll put that first, you know, and then. Outside of that um, uh, is what everybody know of him just by what the media, you know, displays people to be. Absolutely. But we all know that, you know, television is for programming. Mm -hmm. Radio is for programming. Yeah. So they only going to show us and let us hear what they want us to hear, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and position us in this space where they want us to either, you know, believe this or believe that. And most of us, we believe everything we see on television. You know, we don't really go in and we don't dig into stuff because if we hear the same story from five different people, it has to be the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Right, absolutely. but in reality, it's always three sides, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for real, you got the truth, you got the person that's, that's telling a lie, and then you got the other side that's, that's, that they have their story too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you got right. her story, his, his story, story, and then the real story. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in this film right here, we we tend to um, uh, turn the cameras and, and actually let the world see who he was as a person, mm -hmm. you know, because of course we got the media that display and put him, as bad you know, moon rising. bad moon mm -hmm. rising, first of all, mm -hmm. right. you know, now we, when we say bad, we think of bad like sweet, like this, yeah. uh, uh, right, right. you know, but when the Caucasian people say bad, they think of bad like locked up bad, <laughs> right. you know, right. but uh, it's a difference. So, you know, you gotta be careful how they yeah. label us, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and we have to be careful how we accept that label when they do label us, mm, yeah. you know? So, um, and I say that all to say that that guy's a great guy, you know? I haven't known him all my life, but the mm. time that I had spent with him and the stories that I had heard of about him mm -hmm. and then to get him, um, uh, 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 somebody get him, get the stories all stamped, mm -hmm. you know? And you, I mean, what, I mean, everybody can say I'm a bad person because you don't really know me. Yeah, but yeah. when you get to know me, and if you know me, then you will know I'm something different. Right. Jerry, how does Andre feel about the movie? Has he had a chance to see the rough draft? And how does he feel about his story finally getting told? Oh, yeah. So uh, we sat down and we... we flew to Michigan. Yes, I, I, we actually flew, flew to Michigan. Me and my wife, we, we, we flew down there because Andre okay. was like, I need to see it. I want to see what, what we have done yeah. and everything like that. So we flew down there. We let him see it. And uh, y'all want me to tell y'all what happened? What oh, happened, yeah, man? Do y'all want me to tell y'all what happened? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to give it to him raw? <laughs> <laughs> what we here for? Nah, look, I, from the bullshit. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. I know we get an argument with you. <laughs> you, I tell you. <laughs> Go. I, you want me to tell you the truth? <laughs> Dude, we have Cause truth. I can't lie. No, we can. You can't because lie. Because I can't lie. I just, yeah. I just, it's not in my yeah, principle yeah, to lie. Yeah. If, you, if you lie, you gotta remember this. Shit. I can't. I can't exactly. remember a lie if I told you one. So I'm gonna tell you the truth about when he seen it we watched it it was a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago yeah a couple of weeks ago a few mm -hmm. weeks ago we watched flew it michigan. flew in michigan uh oh, we watched goodness. it over and over a few times and uh his reaction was he had two reactions mm. he got chills mm. and they wouldn't stop running he said jerry i, I can't my chills can't stop running i can't stop running my, I, i'm getting chills like this my god and then after that he told me this, uh, and I know, can I curse? Say yeah. what you feel. He said, it's bitch dope. He said, it's bitch dope. Now, 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 I I know that what, what you're saying is true because he kind of told me that, right? He didn't say quite that. Right. But I want to get into uh, Double Law. 
Double R, mm -hmm. um, you're the co-producer on this movie. Associate producer. Associate producer. Yeah. Excuse Thank me. Double R is the only guy that comes in here with his own car. That's right. You know, from back in the day. Car smell like cologne. Yeah, <laughs> car, car smell. Car smell good. Who wanted to put the car in? <laughs> he he did that for a He no damn but uh, Double R, you you know you knew Dre very well. It's one of um, my best friends. Ab absolutely, and absolutely. Yeah, right. And, and yeah. uh, you know, tell yeah. us a little bit some about. We're going to get into you know nice. to to your whole situation. You were living with Dre, if I'm not mistaken, in Oakland when you uh, when he's playing with the Raiders. Yeah. Uh huh. He had a, he had a label at the time. We were running the label. Yeah. And, uh, and what was that? So what was that whole situation like with with the label and what was going on with that whole situation when y'all were in? Uh, when y'all were in Oakland, you know how 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 did everything go down then? You know, because he had got traded o from Oakland. There was a lot of o Oakland KC. I mean, I was there with him from, from here to you know from Atlanta, just from Michigan because we both have Michigan roots. Mm -hmm. uh, my fam my dad's family's from Michigan, and my, my mom's family's from here. So we've always been friends. And then he got drafted to Atlanta, and it was like a no brainer. And then, of course, he's always been passionate about the music. That's another thing that people don't know about Dre. Mm. He's been very, he's always been very, very passionate about the music. Wow. And uh, so he started a label, and me and Mike Millione and Darrell Summerauer and a few of us, his close friends, you know, were running the label for him. So that meant, you know, wherever he, whatever city he was in, we were in. Mm. And it was, you know, it, it, it was, it, I went to, Several all Pro Bowls, mm. um, and we, we it was just it, it was just a kinship and a brotherhood, and you know the good, bad, and the ugly. Mm. You know because all of us, you know, it's like this. It, it was sunny just a few minutes ago. Look out yeah. the window now; it's, the, the, the skies are dark. Yeah, that you know that, I mean? that what do you mean? No. What does this got to do with me? I thought you were talking the, to me. No, because it, it's man. that wiggity wax stuff again. It's that wiggity wiggity wax stuff again. Every time he out there, he's out there questioning. Yeah. Then that's what happened. No. 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 You, you, said a dark car. you said a minute ago, it was sunny when I was speaking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's ominous out there right now. Exactly. It's that cloud it's heavy, too. But no, oh, it's but, about uh, to go down but, but, outside. But, 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 let me tell you well, so tell some of y'all about Rodney Reed. Let me tell you some of y'all about Rodney. Uh... Here's a guy that I look up to. You always don't give me great, great advice. Uh, and you've done that with a lot of young, young artists. Uh, I don't see you around the city, man, uh, Rodney, dealing with, you know, dealing with artists. You know, it, it, whether it's me, whether it's, I don't care if it was Young Thug, I don't care if it was a football player, basketball player, you always kind of, I've always kept it like 1,000. Um, Dre reminds me, you and Dre kind of remind me of each other. Is that a Michigan thing, or is that just, you know? That's just being who you are, and, and regardless of where you're from, because I represent the A. Mm. You understand me? The A is where I stay, okay. and where I'm always. I could get a billionaire status, and this going to be this going to always be my home. I represent the A, east side, west side, north side, south side, side. side yeah. period. This is my niggas around here, yeah. and I'm going to stand up for my niggas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Period. My little daughter, who's a rock star, she she right here. She gonna let you know I'm from the Cato. Right. Right. Period. Right. Period. This is this is what this is this is where I dwell. Right. Yeah. Period. This is why I love. Mm -hmm. I look outside. I know how to. I might know how to. <laughs> I might know how to cut through the path and get to the cater. <laughs> Beat the helicopter. Yeah. Come on. I'm Beat the helicopter. You, I'm telling you, and I love my town. Yeah. I love my town, and 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 when when you when, when you love something, whether it be y'all, whether it be my family, whether it be my friends, and you're willing to die for it, you don't have to compromise your brand. You yeah, understand me? Yeah. I ain't finna be, get around you, I'm one way. Right. Get around you, I'm another yeah. way. Get around you, I'm another way. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm gonna be double R. If you like me, you don't. And if you, if you don't like it, you better talk behind my back because we, 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 we square up now. And, <laughs> you know, and, and, and hell it. Yeah. Mm. And I ain't no tough guy. Come on. But I stand for what I believe in, man. I believe in my child, man. Yeah. Uh, double R, uh, it's a lot going on in rap right now, and I need you to get some advice to these uh -oh. young, these young guys. I know you were gonna go ahead. I got to, uh, because you're the OG, 
and these young kids need to hear it. Um, there's a lot going on in the industry. We have so many. Uh, uh, we have a, 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 a district attorney saying that in 60 days that uh, indictments are coming for this and that, and we have rappers that have been killed every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, when we was coming up in rap, the biggest thing was, you know, we might have a 38 in our boot or something, and, you know, we, we might get to fighting at the club, but everybody was pretty much going home. You know, mm, now right that, that nowadays that you got the philosophy. Yeah, but nowadays these kids, uh, you know, are killing each other. Um, um, every week there's a new rapper dying. What do you feel like the state of hip hop is right now? And and what advice, uh, you know, as an OG, would you tell a young artist that's stepping in the game right now? I mean, I really the, the um, only advice I could give them, like I would give to my kids. Like I would get in my brother, like I'll get it, you, you know, is you hit that well, mic keep, on. one, one, keep your business out the street. Especially yeah. if you're doing something wrong. Right. You don't want to advertise it. You know, I come from an era uh when if you was in the game, you did everything in your power to not appear to be in the game. Right. You see what I'm saying? You so you kept the heat off, you kept the robbers off of you. Now, if you flash, you you know, and that seems to be the theme now, and I don't knock them. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I'm 50 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't knock them, and, you know, and, and I will easily pass the torch to my son, mm -hmm. to one of y'all. Mm -hmm. You understand me? We, but we all close in age. But you, if you're doing dirt, or you getting some illicit money, don't motherfucking tell about it. Don't bring attention to yourself. Mm. You bring the heat, man. The only reason the heat coming is because you bringing it. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Some of the if you let's say drugs, I don't know nothing about. That. I don't know about no scamming or nothing. But I'm a retired now, so I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I know about drugs. And if you you could be the biggest drug lord in the motherfucking country, excuse me for cussing. My Say mom, what you feel. My mom bless um, my mom might, she might. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's he's going like, in the corner. Uh, oh. Hold them books. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could be the biggest, you could be the biggest drug, but don't tell it. You don't know. It's a nigga in that building right there, probably running everything that come through Atlanta, and you would never know it. He going to get in his car. He going to go to work. He going to go up in that, what's that, the IBM building? Mm -hmm. He going to go up and he going to get, he, he going to go up to Alpharetta. Get in his car, go home. He ain't on. He, come on, man. He might be in a Subaru. Mm -hmm. You understand me? He ain't on the. Uh, uh, uh. You know, we have, for whatever reason, I guess it, it maybe comes from slavery to a degree, but we have always wanted to wear our worth on our sleeve. Yeah. Mm. To say we have, we've made it. We free now. We've accomplished something. We got this. We got that. You understand yeah. me? And that brings heat yeah. if you're doing wrong. That goes back to the ancient times, though, because, you know, we got the uh, the pyramids and stuff. You know, yeah. the kings and queens, we always mm -hmm. was dressed up in gold. Yeah. We might, it, yeah it's inherent. Yep. That's it. It's inherent. But if you're doing wrong, you can't broadcast it. And I don't, I, I don't get it in another nigga. My granddad told me this, and I'm going to tell you all this. If you spend six months of the year minding your own business, mm -hmm. and then the other six months of the year stand out another nigga business, you'll <laughs> have a good move. year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm telling you. That's OG. Right? Come on. I don't care if a nigga gay, straight. I'm not in the nigga business. Come on. So I don't have no problem. Yep. Yeah. I go anywhere. And I go to West Side. He said, I fuck with everybody in my town. Right. Because I ain't in the nigga business. Yeah, you understand dude, me? The only thing they're going to get mad at me about is the. Uh, is that girl asking who who is that? <laughs> but you know, Rodney. Now you know some people subscribe to the to the uh, the notion of this here that as a black man, your business is my business because we are interconnected. So what you do will eventually affect the community. So if you're out here killing our young men, raping our women, spreading disease, uh, genocide on our own people, that eventually it's gonna come to your doorstep. So I wanna, I wanna say that by saying that a lot of business that 
blacks have is my business. It is my business if I see something wrong. If there's a rapist in the hood, it's my business to tell on him. You understand what I'm saying? You're not going to run around my hood snatching up our little girls and I know something about it and I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to mind my business. No, right. that is my business. Yeah. Now, well, is that considered so, a, sw- a snitch huh? or no? That's not considered a snitch then, huh? No, a okay. snitch is when you and I both go out to do something knowing right. that we're doing it and you get caught and I get away, and then I tell on you. Right, That's right. The, we were in cahoots together. When the money was being split and the dope was being cooked, I was right there with yeah. you. Now, <laughs> snitching is not, yeah. I'm going to work every day, right. and you riding around at the high school snatching up kids, yeah. and my baby goes there. You understand what I'm saying? I just wanted to clarify that for the young folks that are listening. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Matter of fact, I, when I'm talking to Dexter Tucker, uh, you know, I, which was our partner. Yeah, most he, definitely. He was saying out. when it comes to, now if you're doing, like Rodney said, if you're doing something criminally wrong, with someone, then there's there's no talking. But if I'm not involved in something and it's something going better the hood, then uh, that, that's not snitching. If something, if someone does How something, do to, if no, 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 be, he asked me that. He asked me that right now. He asked me that. But, uh, me folks. and him are talking. Uh, if if straight me? No, 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 no. I'm straightening. <laughs> I'm straightening Jerry. I'm saying to Jerry, but what I'm saying is this, Jerry. Cause I'm glad you brought that up right there. Yeah. Uh, we need to talk about that in the in, in our in our hood. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? If something happens to you, Rodney, uh, be high, and I know about it, what, then what, I'm gonna what, say what, something. What we watching EJ's ass too. <laughs> yes, EJ was right, and I don't want the same thing back from now. Now back to Rodney, double law. I'm talking about the hot seat. <laughs> you know the hot seat, double law. That's your perception of it. Now back to you. Let's go back to um um. You was in um you was in um you was with Meech back in the day. It's one of my okay. best friends. Eggs, absolutely. And we're going to get to that. So, I mean, you have to go one on one on here. I'm going to clear everything out. It's going to be me and you up in here. <laughs> one on one. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 that ain't even what I'm talking about. No, 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 no
And in order to do do that, you have to keep relationships good. You can't burn bridges. You can't tell them folk right now. Dude sitting in jail. We call him dude. Dude sitting in jail, and he ain't told on nobody. He could have told on somebody that been out. Period. But he didn't do it for just himself. He did it for his family first, then his friend, then his cohorts, then everybody else around. When that nigga left the street, the, the economy changed. In Atlanta anyway. Period. And he was all about helping, helping, helping. So, you know, if, you know, you know I, I'm not glorifying my past lifestyle or what we used to do. But we weren't about no uh, pilfering our neighborhoods, you know, uh, mistreating our women, uh, this, that, and the third. We was about trying to just get some bread. And then we get some, then that means you got some. So if I, if I got some money, he got some money. If you got, if I got some money, you got, you got some money. Period. Oh, if I got $20 right now and we, you call me and say, bro, I need ten dollars, man. I gotta get some, some 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 bread and some milk. I'm gonna tell you to come get it. God know you're gonna do the same for me. That that that's what dude was about. That what hands like about. That what he about. That what you about. That what you about. And by growing growth, I'm an old man now. The only thing I can do is but sit back and watch my rock star kids um, do their thing. Yeah, I want to talk about that too. You got a daughter that's that's blowing up out here, man. Uh, and all the movies, I when I look at, it, I see you in uh, Suicide Squad. And, that was the latest. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, Storm Reed. For a lot of y'all that don't know, this is, you are the father of a, a up and coming star. Tell me what that's like to be, you know, the transition, like you said, from being a a, a real street OG. Yeah. You don't seen all the money. Don't been with it, the big Meaches, the the Dundre right everybody. Yeah. And now, about my good friend, Free Ray. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, and, and, but now to to fall back, now you're a father and see, you know what I'm saying, a, you know, a lot of you in your daughter and to see her growth as independently by herself too. What does that feel like? It feels good, not just on her level, but my son, my oldest daughter. The, God tremendously blessed me because they could have been like your daddy. So this is my boy. He could have been like your daddy. And jumped in the game. See, I come from an amazing family, educated family. My mother and father met in college. You understand me? But I just, I had a, a pension for wanting to be, because I was borderline light skin anyway. So I was there. <laughs> Jerry I, told I, us that. <laughs> <laughs> That's borderline. <laughs> so, I to, <laughs> so I had to fight. I had to fight every day and prove I was tough. Yeah. Sometimes I get jumped on. So, I, I I wanted to be more and, and like I'm 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 like just close to being genius, but I didn't when I was coming along that wasn't cool. You understand me? That it was cool to be you know the bad boy. You understand me? So I did everything in my power. You know from. Down by law, oh, you know, Decatur. Mm -hmm. Just I did everything in my power to be accepted by the street and that like criminal element. You know what I mean? Because that that gave you a a a sense of power to a degree. You understand me? And you know, I don't have too many regrets, but um, if I um could um change go back and change some things in time I would I would I would do things a lot differently but speaking on you know not to 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 you know fray from what you had the question that you asked me but to see my kids not just storm but Joshua um Iman Paris all of my kids um my bonus kids um that I that I've able been able to establish relationships over the with over the you know a period of time, to see them thrive and flourish is that that's that's like my pay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know I ain't in the game no more. I ain't got no whole lot. You know what I mean? I, I you know I live an average life now. Uh, I miss the life. 
I, I live an average, nice life now. But to see my kids, oh my God, especially my son, my son, you know, you know, you you don't you don't you don't pick and choose, you know, you love all your children the same and I do. But to have a boy that um that keeps their pants up, mm-hmm. it's gonna he come in here, he's gonna say yes sir to you, yes sir to you. Hey, ain't he Jerry? Yeah he is. Yeah, he, yeah. he just graduated that. from college. Yeah. Much you're thinking about what grad school he's gonna go to, knock your head off on the football field. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's my gift. You know, and you know, hopefully I get to see see some good money again. You know, God seen some good money. <laughs> Double up, talk about the good money and what was going through your mind at that time. Good money. <laughs> but I just wanted to leak away right now, man. Yeah. You know, I ain't no holy roller, but you know, I, I'm gonna do things that's pleasing to God. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why I'm 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 super duper glad to be a part of this movie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? My mm-hmm. motherfucking business partners, Jerry and Dan Spike and mm-hmm. Dexter Tucker, we you know, we mm-hmm. we brothers, we all we got. Yeah. And and you know, they brought me on and then Trey Rise, I can't stop with him. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. without him. They brought me on board as the associate producer and I try you know, I try to do my best to knock it out the park. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Like like wicked and they know, you know, they're my motherfucking babies if we say in Michigan, they're my babies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They can they can have a show at the municipal market mm-hmm. down there. <laughs> Ronnie gonna be there. Uh, mm-hmm. huh? yeah. yeah, right. And stay to the end. <laughs> Not one of those guys that stick the head in. <laughs> you, know, you gotta stick the head in, guys. <laughs> but just listen on their bell for it. And I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna close, but um one of my favorite sayings is we all we got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and and if we don't stick together as a community and a culture, you understand me? And you know, you can't tell folks what to do, especially these younger people, you know what I'm saying? They got this big money, you understand me, and they want to boss ball. Mm-hmm. And you can't really blame them for that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, to go back to your first question is if you're doing anything illicit, try your best to keep it under wraps. Mm. You understand me? And then, you know, you can get away. If you ain't doing it, then rap about it. Right. Fake about it. Right. Put your big cap on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lil Dirk, Lil Dirk said he might well come in court and say you kill a man if, you, if you're rapping about it and you yeah. really did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> might well come and hold your hair up. Yeah, they they said, they said, come, uh, I heard this great man. Yeah, it came across my desk. That um, <laughs> it's some 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 they the, the, what's the lady name Fonny yeah um get ready to come down with two more major indictments on yeah. rappers yeah, right yeah. that's the district attorney from Atlanta that I was telling you yeah, about it, it Fonny. Was sixty days and that to me like I said that goes back to what I was talking about the community stuff uh that believe it or not it, it depends on who it is that that affects the community when you have our moguls. Being snatched off the streets. These are these are future, you know, maybe billionaires. What happened to Kanye and Dr. Dre and stuff and Jay Z and Puffy? How do we know that? Smart, they, they, I mean, you, they were smart enough to keep it under wraps. They might be they might they might be shipping a hundred blocks a day, yeah. right? But they ain't telling about it, right? 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 right. Well, so so, so a lot of the phone talking about a lot of the young guys hearing that from you, a guy that has been to the the feds, yes, man. a guy, a lot of a guy that has seen all that money, been with one of the big biggest guys in Big Meech and seeing all this, hearing that from you, it makes a difference in the community. Yeah. Whether like Man, whether, whether, out the street. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, before I let you go, while I got you right here, you're drinking on something, I want to talk to you about a uh, a, 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 um, a great football player. Now, he went by the name of Derek Thomas. He had passed. And, uh, yes, I was with him the day before he died. That's what? It. Yeah, he was actually, we, we was all together. And they were, um, he was with, um, Dre was playing for the K- Kansas City Chiefs, mm-hmm. living in Kansas City. Dre had bought Bo Jackson an old house. Mm. And it was the gathering spot. Um, and D- DT, all his teammates, everybody would come over and, he, and we was all hanging out. And they was going to something, I think it was in, in New York or something. And they got on the road and had the tragic accident you know what I'm saying? They left him paralyzed mm-hmm. and left him on a, um, what do you call it, life life thing? Yeah. Life support. Yeah, life support. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and his, his mom said she, you know, she, was, she wasn't going to keep letting, you know, she wasn't going to do him like that. 
and um, he passed away. Mm. But he was a headhunter. Yeah. Yeah, I play football, you know, and, and that's my son plays football, and I hope maybe he'll go back to it, but he, he got a degree now, so he can go get him a job at Coca-Cola or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be how you got anything you want to add to to. This part no, one, fellas, we got to get y'all back in for part, part two. two. After exactly. the movie drop, we got to re uh, <laughs> invite some things. Right, right. We got to yeah. get down to the bottom of the whole story because this thing, it's done been an hour, Wicked. We ain't really talked about it. Only right. An hour? Right. right. Yeah. Yes. Right. I hope yeah, I didn't take up too much of the time. No, no, no. both of y'all got to in peace. I want to I I know. know. We got a lot more to talk about. I want to know. I want to know from both of y'all, though, and I'm going to start with you first, Jerry. What do you want people to take away? When they leave this movie Ooh, theater, when I question. when I left when I left from seeing Pac, all eyes on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pac, my friend, I took <laughs> away, and I know that, yeah. and I took away from that that one um, that his mother loved him, mm. which a lot of people out here thought that she talking about she was in jail and she he was raised on bastard bad, child, yeah. and you know, so I, I you know I learned that about him too that he had love for females for 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 women, which. You know, a lot of people thought that he was just out here. You know, everything you see, fuck this. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't, it wasn't black, black love for our queens was something else that I took away. When I look at this Andre Rising movie, and I walk out of this theater, and people walk out of this theater, what did you want to take away, them to take away about Andre Rising? I want to say, just because you look at the cover, mm. don't judge it until you read the pages. Ooh, that's mm. good. So you gotta actually dig into someone's life if you want to know all about them. Yeah. You know, you gotta look at the outside as well and the inside before you come up with a conclusion that you're gonna stand concrete on. Because Andre loved his family, loved his mama, he loved his friends. Yeah, the man got fault. Straight love, man. And and whatever the critics saying something different about him, you gotta know the man. Mm-hmm. You know. And knowing him means coming inside of his life, inside those doors, inside those windows, inside that building, inside those four walls, you know? So don't take everything you read, you know, and take that to the grave with you. You know, if you wanna know somebody, go inside that book, open up that book and read it, meaning go inside their life, you know? Become, do your research, you know? Become a part of their life, you know? Be a friend of theirs or something like that, you know? Actually, be in the same room as them. So, in this movie, I want you to take away. I want you to take a, take with you after seeing this movie that what he did and the accomplishments he did in life, they ought to be put on the pedestal. Absolutely. And put that man the, in the Hall when, of Fame. And when is the premiere again? I need. I need to. <laughs> yes. What, what, when is the premiere date? Mm. The time. What should I wear? Should I? You know? Should I come in my tux? You know what I'm saying? Or should I just come like? Should be announced. Yes, I don't think definitely. they want you that wicked, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jerry. Yeah, so you, Man, yeah. Not, yeah don't even yes. worry about it coming. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it's to be announced. It's, 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 it's forthcoming. If I can yeah. jump on that, please do. It, it's forthcoming. It's going to be within the next month. Okay, we mm-hmm. haven't locked that. We we're not we can't commit to saying blah 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 this that and the third until we just totally lock in where we're going to do it. When we gonna do it and what time we gonna do it, and you guys will be the first to know. We'll release it here. Now, okay. Jerry, I thought you said that it was you sent me a flyer, and that was that it's so that I've been posting that. Is that something <laughs> I need to take down? Is it the premiere? Well, no, the premiere is 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 actually happening on the twelfth. But it's like Rodney said, August the twelfth. August the twelfth. Okay, and that's yeah. gonna be where it's tentative though. It's tentative. Yeah. And that's going to be where. So if y'all got some tentative jobs, we got some tentatives. We got some tentatives going on. They're mitigating factors. They're happening this shit. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So we we can't just jump out there until we get it locked, ground, and what they call it, stock locked and barrel. Yeah, yeah. And and the special. It would be fair to to the people that's supporting us. And there's those that's supposed to know will know. Yes. Yeah. We'll do the release right here. <laughs> right here. Yeah. The B.I. show. We can be high. I'll be here. I'll be here. I'll see the whole movie up here. <laughs> yeah. The whole movie right here. Got, you, got, you got me in B.I. Little Pop. How we looking up in there? Oh, my God. Look, y'all look better in the movie than y'all do it in here. No. <laughs> 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 
Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Because guess what? It's we use the best filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We use the best lighting people. My oh, God. We, we didn't. We didn't, This is not a B movie. That's not right. at all. You know, nah, it is this really is not. This is something that that <laughs> Paramount, Lionsgate, or something will do. We're on that level. Yeah. Because that's where we put the money at. This yeah. ain't yeah. Bootleg. We, we didn't. No we bootleg. didn't put the money and just okay. Pookie now got a camera. Let's make a movie. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, we, we we use the best of the best. And our, and our filmmakers, the photographers and all yeah, that. Yeah, the DP, most yeah. definitely. Shout out to John. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what 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 it is, uh, we are, let, let's get this straight, right? <laughs> we are content creators. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. more. Double dare with Dre. Content mm -hmm. creators. Yeah. This ain't no just Hollywood making a movie off Dre. You got niggas that was with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, Beehive Man, uh, I have nothing left. If you do, uh, put us out, Jerry. I'm ready for part two already. Yeah. Absolutely. Great interview. Right, Great. We, we're going to get a steak when we come. We're going to talk about next time. <laughs> yeah. we, next, time we, well, next time you come back, we're going to talk about Umaga. No, not Umaga. Kam Kamala. Kamala. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> Let them know. You can be big. <laughs> but it's some power that come in the little show. <laughs> that might come in small packages. I'm telling you. Tell come on down. A TikTok with that a small That might come in small packages. <laughs> Those are facts. Oh, and that's just what it is. And I'm coming off the top rope with it. Yeah, all, all the way. I'm coming off the top rope. Yeah. Like Coco Beware. <laughs> Coco Beware. Yeah. I'm coming off the top rope for all y'all. Yeah, come all on now. Period. Well, Hey man, we I got water. Hey, and I would like to say, man, thank you, Beehive. Thank you, Wicked, for inviting us to the show. Please invite us back. Yeah. And this time. Whenever. Yeah. And, Maybe y'all can go live from. You know, y'all like my big brothers, man. Y'all already know y'all. Big brothers. Man. Exactly. Yeah. Mike, you old as fuck, Jason. Nah, I'm man. Jerry want to be young. I'm super so young. Don't run. I don't want to be 50 years old. I'm super young. Actually, I'm the youngest nigga in here. I'm the youngest nigga in here. Right, right. He's got gray hair. Yeah, he about 50, though. I'm the youngest thing walking. I feel like the youngest thing beehive. I act like the youngest thing. I do it all the time. Point me to me. I'm 30. Oh, wow. You're young as hell. Yeah. Well, beehive, you might be the youngest one. Well, EJ, he's 10 years old. He's EJ. Oh, yeah. He look like he's about 12. Yeah, he's definitely 14. That nigga interned for ITT. <laughs> and there you have it, man. Be how ready yo shouty. OG Gates the Wicked. Jerry. D Nay. Come on now. Yes. Double Law Ratney Reed. Yes, sir. Call it y'all in a minute, man. Love y'all.